Hello, and welcome to a philosophy class. So I have this idea, and I'm just going to be speaking it, because it's here right now. So the idea is every single grade level in school, there's a class on philosophy. So I don't know how it would be arranged, but the, the, the idea is every single person has time dedicated in every year of their school, in their school curriculum, to philosophy. Now what is philosophy? And also why would it work? So the reason why this idea would work is because I noticed that whenever the hint of philosophy, the questioning of something deeper came up during my classroom, everyone in the room got excited because it is something that everyone can engage in, participate in, is the point of self-reflection. It's a point of looking at everyone's perspectives and trying to find out the answer. That is, for me, what philosophy is, and that's something that I lived as a 12-year-old kid until it was, I guess, until today, technically. But it's something of, of such a deep point of questioning, and it will cover all aspects of life. The question about how can we even know something? How do we reach a point of knowing something? What is a belief and what is fact? And what is the best thing to do in a certain situation and why? What are the morals and codes that either individuals are following, or certain groups, or certain cultures are following. To really understand how people think, how we operate, how do we work as human beings, and going into the deepest levels of that, into our physical bodies, into all the different sciences and psychologies that have been studied, looking at them all together. Where do thoughts come from? Even just that point of reflecting on how thoughts are something that's automatic. When are we actually engaging in ourselves and speaking directly? And when are we actually living a thought, living a pattern, living a reaction? To really understand reality in all the different ways and all different facets within ourselves, who we are as human beings in our minds, in physical reality, physical world. How can we test something on the physical reality and physical world and find out the truth? How can we look at, for example, autism and vaccines and whether they're connected at all? How would we even approach asking that kind of question? Or even with global warming, or even with the religions, if you look at all the different world's religions and be able to take in any kind of information, no matter how controversial it may be, and really seeking the truth, really going deep, how can we engage with a subject without getting emotionally involved, without having any bias, without taking any kind of reaction or holding on to one idea versus another? How can we approach something with a completely open mind and be completely winning, willing to look at the facts, look at the logic, and even, like I said in the beginning, how can we know something? How can we even say something is a fact? How do we approach this? all these different things? And these are all questions, they all have answers. And... If I had people that I would teach, I would be able to teach them all these different things and guide them through all these different things. 
because everything is very practical and very commonsensical. How to approach doing research, how to go look at things, either do your own test yourself, creating a study, designing your own study to look at these points, to, to go interview people about research, how to reflect deeply on things and how to test yourself, see how your thoughts work in all these different levels. To truly be a philosopher, to truly be a scientist and an artist in all these different things at the same time. This is all about what is truth, what is reality. It's about how can we know something, truly know it, and be able to enter into a point of saying that I do not know something, and that is okay, and I am, this is the information that I have available, and I'm not able to determine the answer right now, and that is okay as well. How do we approach things like philosophy, things like science, without any belief, without any emotion involved, where we're not making it even a religion? where we are actually observing our own selves and seeing our own emotions and our own reactions and seeing whether it's trying to make us move to a point of creating an idea about something. Instead of using all these words, all these tools for the purpose of, of something good, something better, and seeing what the most best thing is or the most good thing is understanding what that means and defining that for ourselves so these are all points that I've lived and has led me to the truth in so many different ways where I've you reach a point of realizing you have to self-develop yourself because for you to be able to engage with a subject it starts with who you are as a person who you are as a personal influence what you see and perceive so you have to make sure who you are as a person is developed so that you're able to engage and see directly and correctly and see truth to be able to take on all the different perspectives and hold them together at the same time and seeing what is the truth within all that. To be able to live things like health and physical nutrition and physical living and human relationships and how to see what is real within each of these points, how to express something without fear, without reaction. What is an expression? What is a reaction? what is real within us, what is our personality, and what is something that we've decided to do, and decided to create, how to make decisions and how to create them. This is simply what it means to be alive and being human. For those who are truly engaging this with awareness to actually create all these points for real. This is part of being alive. To be a real living person is to do all these things. If you're not doing all these things, you're not truly living, you're not truly engaging with yourself, with others, with your life, with this reality. You are simply within a certain thought, a certain belief, a certain idea, a certain pattern, and you've taken that out to yourself without question. No matter what form it may be, no matter what it may be. It can even be a point of following dogmatically a point of science or a point of information that you accept as facts. It would be a point of simply living within your life as how it is right now within making money, within having a family, without engaging with anything deeper, like how I'm describing here in this video. To truly understand how reality works, how we work as people, how to develop ourselves, to go deeper, all of those points are part of being alive and engaging and being aware to truly create 
our lives and create this world with understanding of this life and this world and ourselves. That is what is real. And that is part of living this life as a journey. And giving to others, giving to the next generation, taking everything we've learned, everything we've lived, and living that with others and showing them the way. And that is how we progress. That is how we live as the life, as the totality of life itself, as everything that exists. And there's nothing that we cannot truly understand if we aren't willing to change for it, to be able to understand it, to be able to change ourselves, to be able to develop ourselves so that we are able to understand, that we are able to see and read and speak the points and truly, truly become what we are seeing and living and understanding and realizing that with our own realizations of what we see and understand about reality, about ourselves, that we have a responsibility, we must act and we must change appropriately according to what we are learning. If we are learning that we are stuck and abused and limited, then we have to push those limits, then we have to develop, and we have to stop the abuse. We have to become more. Just like in the Matrix. When you see the reality, you have to respond appropriately. And just like the allegory allegory of Plato's cave, it's the same point. We have to engage with people, with life. And we have to live it for ourselves. We have to understand everything, at least the things that really matter. Understand how we work as beings, as people, as humans, as minds, as systems. What is real, what isn't, what it needs to be stopped, what needs to be started, what needs to change, and what does it need to change into to be able to understand all the different aspects at the same time and live that that is part of being alive that is part of being real that is part of living fully and living a fulfilling life truly say that I'm alive Require, requires all of that so that's my idea for a philosophy for every single person to start with simple questions. How does this work? Why does this work? No matter what it may be. To truly understand things deeply. To truly understand how a person works deeply. To understand habits and patterns and memories and past and the physical information. You do not have all this information I'm talking about presented all together perfectly. At least the information that is available. But I guess that's supposed to require a person to be able to collect all such information and present it as such. And that person will have to require having the understanding, having the ability to connect all the dots and show it. Because what I do see is vastly we are in a deep point of belief and ideas and following ourselves. But at the same time, there's potential everywhere to understand, to learn. And like how I've seen growing up, people get really excited and they want to question the things that are a little bit deeper. Everyone wants to know the truth. And it is possible to know it and live it. Um, but it requires changing ourselves to be able to even understand it. And to really understand that what's truly important in life, which is people, 
we are what is truly important, not anything else really. Us as living beings, us as the living life forms of the planet. There's nothing else that really matters. Let our ideas about things not being insulted, not being mad or sad or angry or even happy. What matters is truly each other. And then when we live that point of such deep care and deep understanding, then we are fulfilled. But like I said, in order to understand such points, you do need to change in who you are because that is what, what, that is, what is required. Who you are is, determines what you see and what you perceive. So who you are determines what you can perceive and, and understand with what I'm saying. But it is possible. It is possible. It takes time and it requires initiating and engaging with your curiosity with everything that is a good value, a good characteristic that is like, for example, hardworking or willing to listen, understand or be supportive or everything that really is truly harmonious with life, truly caring, truly giving, truly happy just because it's like a dog would be. There's so many different qualities that those are the qualities will give us strength to be able to take the next step to understand more deeply. Because those are the things that really reminds us of what is important. That we are all of us capable of living expressions that are truly independent, that are truly us that isn't dependent on other people or in the environment that we can truly give to others that is our of our real nature and we can learn more expressions we can become more and live more and do more and that is the nature and that is the future of us as humanity as people that is the progress forward that is the new frontier that is what must become is what must be lived. And all this information that I'm sharing has been things I've lived for myself. And a very important part of that has been destiny. Since destiny simply provides the straightforward information, the straightforward path of understanding what the mind is as a system. Something that I wouldn't have been able to discover accidentally or even with with great effort maybe, since we aren't really able to perceive it directly. But given the simple structure of what it actually exists as, you can see all the dots are connected. The mind is really a simple structure. Um, maybe I'll say that for another video, but I've been doing videos and blogs for a long time, since 2012. And I've shared a lot over the years. And a lot of other people have shared a lot over the years. And there are courses available, there are a lot of information out there. And... Even with this simple information, most people, I suppose, aren't really able to understand it. But if you are such a person who's willing to do whatever it takes to learn to understand, then it's possible. To be able to take such information, reflect it in your life, and see how it all works all without being told to, all without being requested to. And that's what I did. I just took the information from Destiny, looked at it with my life, applied it, and see how indeed it explained me, my reality, my relations, people, humanity, history, and our future as well. And it really is quite simple.
and this is all just part of being alive. Wanting to do better, to do more for others, for ourselves. Wanting to create a better life for everyone. How can we do that if we don't truly understand how thoughts come here? How do they manifest? How do they pop up? Where do they come from? Where are they connected to? Structure and the history of it. And that is a constant point of questioning that can be done. And the answers are there. And that is what I wanted to say. And those are my words. Okay. So thank you very much. Have a good one. Bye.